If you want to make your first thousand dollars on Amazon KDP, then this video will give you the exact roadmap on how to do that. What is up, guys? Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to do a complete Amazon KDP tutorial for beginners. And my goal is to give you the exact roadmap to get you to your first thousand dollars a month in Amazon KDP. So if you're just getting started with Amazon KDP and you don't know, you know, where to start, what to do, or perhaps you want to start Amazon KDP, but you want to do a little more research. Well, this tutorial will walk you through every single step, step by step, so that you have a clear understanding and an idea on how to start making money with Amazon KDP. So make sure to take notes. And with that being said, let's get started. So first off, who is Sean? Who am I? I started publishing since 2016. So I've been publishing for over seven years now and uh, I hit $10,000 a month in my 10 months into publishing. And I've built it up to multiple six figures a year KDP business. So it was doing 35 to $40,000 a month every single month, not just in quarter four, not just in December, every single month. Uh, and I ran that for multiple years and you know, making multiple six figures a year from it. And I've eventually sold that KDP account for $820,000. And I later on started another KDP account, which is the one that I'm building right now. And I already hit $20,000 a month for the second KDP account. And it is continuously growing from there. And if you guys don't believe me, then you can always check out my playlist that I created called the KDP Income Reports playlist, where I pretty much, you know, showcase my results from my first KDP account, as well as documented the journey of starting my second KDP account from zero. And every single month I did an income report uh, to show you that I'm not making this up, which to my knowledge, I don't know anybody else doing something like this. So. I was able to quit my nine to five job and travel the world thanks to Amazon KDP. Uh, before this, I was failing in multiple business models. I mean, I started entrepreneurship when I was 18 and I failed in so many different businesses to the point where I thought I was just a failure to the point where like I was so used to failing that when I failed again, I was like, oh, you know, I knew I knew that I was going to fail. And it was crazy because when I started making money, it was just not in my reality because I was so used to failing that I just couldn't believe it. It took a lot of time to start getting used to the point where, oh, I can make money online. Right. Anyways, I was able to succeed with Amazon KDP and I've traveled the world. This is me in Bali, you know, going to cool places. This is in Thailand uh, and this is in China. And this is in Hawaii as well and some other places like Europe. Uh, this is Philippines on the right. So essentially, I've been traveling the world, making money online. And that is the craziest thing about publishing is that you literally can work this business anywhere in the world. And it's one of the best business if you want absolute freedom, because I've been doing this digital nomad lifestyle for a couple years now. I currently live in Thailand once again uh, and just traveling around the world. You can literally do this anywhere. So I was able to quit my job, travel the world, and that's cool. But most importantly, I was able to help hundreds of students to also do the same. You know, we have students just getting started making a couple thousand dollars, students here doing $7,000 a month, $5,000 a month, $6,000, you know, and a lot more. We have students doing tens of thousands of dollars a month, doing a lot better than me, actually. Uh, and, you know, just absolutely killing it and also quitting their job and traveling the world, right? So that is the most important thing. Uh, but let's get started with the actual tutorial of how to start this business. So first, what is Amazon KDP? Well, KDP stands for Kindle Direct Publishing. It's Amazon's self-publishing platform. It is absolutely free to sign up and you can publish a book by uploading your book files to it. Now, why Amazon KDP, in my opinion, is the best business to start. And this is after trying out so many different business models, you know, after seven years of publishing, after 10 years of entrepreneurship, I've pretty much seen every single business models out there. And even though I've seen other business models, I can confidently say that publishing is one of, if not the best business to start uh, for beginners to start making money, but also for, you know, experienced entrepreneurs who want freedom and who want passive income. Okay. And the reason why is because you absolutely have no inventory. You don't have to carry around inventory like with Amazon FBA, which sucks, right? Having to ship a bunch of products to your house and this and that, you know, you absolutely have nothing like that because everything is online. Okay. There's no customer service, which is huge. If you're in business, you understand customer service is one of the 
biggest headaches and you don't have to do that because Amazon handles it for you. There are very, very few businesses like this where there's you don't have to do any customer service. So the next one is high profit margins with digital products. So we all know that digital products has a significantly higher profit margin than physical products because there's no manufacturing, there's no shipping, right? And other fees that might eat into your profit. So if you have to choose between physical or digital, you should always go for digital products because it's much better. Also, it's open to almost everyone in the world. So Amazon KDP is open to pretty much all the countries except a few. Uh, there are very, very few that's not open to, but basically almost all countries uh, you can sign up and you know start doing KDP. Now, there's also very low learning curve. And the reason why the learning curve is low is because there's so many less steps that you have to figure out. If you do other businesses, you have to figure out what to do with inventory, how to store it, how to ship the products, right? Because you have to also do shipping and handling. You also have to figure out customer service because that's another part of the business. You also have to figure out uh, manufacturing of the product because that's also involved. But as I mentioned earlier, digital products, you don't have to do any of that. And with KDP, you don't have to do no customer service, no shipping and handling. So the learning curve, the stuff you have to learn to make money in this business is a lot less compared to other businesses, okay? And it's low startup cost because a lot of these books you can create for free or you can outsource easily for a very low cost. And that is why compared to other businesses, uh, it's very, very cheap to start. And most importantly, it is low competition. So if you look at you know, this image here, the yellow circles uh, pretty much you know, shows how many products that are on Amazon. So if you're doing physical products, if you're doing Amazon FBA, then you're competing against all these yellow circles, right? So if you're gonna start a business, would you rather compete with all these other people doing Amazon FBA, right? Selling physical products or this little amount of people that's selling books on Kindle. So before we get started with the actual strategies, I wanna go over the mindset real quick. This is not a get rich quick scheme. Amazon KDP, although it's a lot easier than other businesses, it is absolutely not a get rich quick scheme. It still takes time, effort, and you will have to build this up, right? It's slow in the beginning, just like any other business, but with Amazon KDP, it's crazy because the snowball effect really kicks in. First, you're publishing books, you're not really seeing any results, you know, sales aren't coming in because you don't have any reviews on your book, so it's slow, right? But as you keep publishing more, as you keep getting reviews, sales will start increasing and the more sales you get the more reviews you get and the more reviews you get the more sales you get and it's this absolute snowball that once it starts you don't even have to do anything and it just keeps going okay and it keep building and essentially the mindset you want to have is you're building passive income that will last for years so you're putting energy and effort and you're building this up front but after that it's going to be like very very passive later on okay and also another thing is you're learning a valuable skill so you know as you build this business you're learning online marketing that's transferable skills to different businesses if you ever choose to start another one but understanding that you're learning a valuable skill is also key all right so the types of books you can publish is high content so when we say high content these are standard non-fiction and fiction books that you see in bookstores typically 150 pages to 200 pages long and it's pretty much all text medium content books generally means puzzle books coloring books there are you know less content than the high content books but a little more than low content and that's why we call it the medium content books now low content pretty much means that there's very little content inside like journals and planners which are just lines where you know customers fill it out instead of you have the content inside so that is typically how we uh, categorize these books now the big understanding i want you guys to have is low content books obviously is a lot easier and cheaper to make because once again there is no content that you have to create right oftentimes there's templates online that you can use uh, and so it's really easy to create these books and because of that most of the people are doing low content. So you have the highest competition. And whenever the barrier of entry is this low and there's so many competition, then typically you make less money because it's so competitive, right? But as you increase the barrier of entry, so there's a little more work involved in creating medium content books because you have to now get designs and then a little more text inside, right? So there's less people who's willing to do that. And so you will make more money because you have less competition. Now, if you move up to high content, it'll be a little more expensive, a little more time consuming because you have to create more content for the book. But because of that, not a lot of people are willing to do it. And so your competition is the least and you will make the most amount of money. So the big takeaway here is 
Just because something is easy to do doesn't mean it's the best option. Sometimes it's actually good to have a higher barrier of entry and being one of the very few that is willing to put in a little more work to make money because oftentimes that is where you make most of the money. And the good news is even if you're doing high content books, it's significantly cheaper than any other businesses. It's significantly easier to start than any other businesses, okay? So the big question I get is what if I'm not an expert? Uh, I'm not qualified to you know, publish a book, right? This is a lot of people's limiting beliefs. Well, you have to understand that the value comes from organizing the information and teaching it in an easy to understand way, not from having new information. If you read a lot of books, if you take online courses in general, you understand that it's very hard to find new information. Like all the informations are out. You know, all the information is pretty much online already, right? So, you know, the value is not coming up with new information, but more so organizing it in a way that people can follow it step by step. Because yes, all the info is out online, but it's so much work because it's all over the place, right? So you're saving people's time and that is a you know huge value for them. Now you can also learn as you go. So as you publish more books on a topic, you naturally become an expert because you will have to learn more about the topic, right? So you can eventually, you don't have to start off as an expert, but you can eventually become an expert later on. Now, quality over everything. We are producing high quality books that people love. We're not spamming low quality books and we're not tricking people into buying a crap book. That is not how this business works. That is not what I teach. And you also have to understand if you wanna make long-term income, uh, then you will have to produce high quality books because low quality books just gonna get bad reviews. It's gonna die off, sales will die and you will have to keep pumping out low quality books. And then you're in, gonna be in this rat race of just keep churning out new content and we don't want that. All right, now let's talk about the actual steps that you have to take. The first thing you have to do is keyword research. So when it comes to keyword research, I want you guys to download this Chrome plugin called DS Amazon Quick View. It's free. If you do wanna invest a little bit, there is a better tool called Katie Spy, uh, but it's about $60, I think. I'll leave a link in the description below as well. But you know, if you're willing to invest, Katie Spy is better. If not, DS Amazon Quick View is okay. Now, what you wanna do is write down any topics that comes into your mind. So whether that's your passion, interest, hobbies, anything, right? Whatever book topic idea, just write it down. And you also wanna search Amazon bestseller categories to get more ideas. All right, so just to show you how DS Amazon Quick View works, this is the plugin. So you wanna look for this in the Chrome store. I'll leave a link in the description as well. Uh, and Katie Spy will look like this. So once you download DS Amazon Quick View, when you search a book topic on Amazon, you're gonna start seeing this information, which makes it a lot easier to look at the, the BSR. So BSR is a bestseller rank uh, for the book, and it just makes the keyword research process a lot smoother, okay? Now you can also do Katie Spy. So if you click on Katie Spy, it'll pretty much pull the data from page one, so you don't have to check it one by one, and you can see everything right here from the sales rank. So this is the BSR, this is this number right here, okay? And then you can see the reviews, how much is SMLE making, and you can also check the Kindle and the audiobook. So, you know, you don't have to manually switch over. So it saves a lot of time. Now, in terms of getting ideas from the bestseller category, what you wanna do is go to Amazon, click on bestsellers right here. And then from here, scroll down, click on books, and then choose whatever category that appeals to you. You should be checking pretty much every single one, but you can start off with the one that you're interested in. So let's just do crafts, hobbies, and home for now. And then from here, you can niche down even more, but basically what you're doing is looking at you know, the book topics, right? These are the books that are selling really well. And then you're asking yourself, what is this book about? And you're extracting topics, okay? So this first one right here, it's a carpenter's note on life. Uh, a little hard to extract topics. Uh, it seems like a memoir kind of thing. This one is Encyclopedia of Herbal Medicine. So what is this topic? Herbal Medicine, right? So you can take note on that. Herbal Medicine is a keyword, okay? So this one, uh, Skinny Taste Meal Prep. So it's meal prepping. So you can also take note on that. And then you can go and check, you know, if that's a profitable topic. We have Stress Relief Adult Coloring Book, right? So that is another topic that you can go and, you know, take note. So that is pretty much what you do going into bestsellers category. You can do, you know, different categories as well. And then just keep taking note on that. So this one, how to keep house while drowning. Uh, so this is like a decluttering, you know, cleaning up your house uh, kind of book. So, and then you want to start seeing patterns, right? So if you start seeing a lot of the same topic, uh, in the, the category, then you know that it's profitable because, you know, obviously this is the bestseller category. So we have a lot of coloring books. We have some useful knot book. This is also a mindful mindfulness coloring book. Um, 
we have a simple living book and then we have a little more of the minimalism decluttering organizing your home kind of uh, topics popping up so once you have a list of you know keywords that you can check you want to type that into the amazon search bar and check one by one okay so how do you validate if the keyword uh, is profitable or not and when i say keyword it's just the topic so you know when i say decluttering that is the topic slash keyword right when i say you know medical herbs that is the keyword slash topics when i say adult coloring books that is the keyword slash the book topic okay so you want to look for other books uh, with less than 80,000 BSR in the bookstore because if it's doing less than 80,000 in the BSR, that book is making an average of $500 per month just from the paperback side. And then, you know, if they have an ebook, audiobook, a hardcover, that'll be even more that they're making, right? So that is a pretty good range to aim for. Now, if you find at least three or more books that fits that criteria, then that keyword is profitable. And if books on page one has low reviews, that is a good sign that you don't need a ton of reviews to rank. So that is also another thing you want to keep in mind. So let me show you some examples with this decluttering keywords. I typed it in, make sure you're in the bookstore right here. You get all these results and then you start looking at the BSR here and see, you know, can I find at least three other books that is less than 80,000? Because that'll tell me that this decluttering keyword is profitable. OK, so this one is doing, you know, 5,800. So it's way below 80,000 and it's uh, making a ton of money. OK, so that's one. We have another book here and we have another book, right? This is on decluttering 27,000. And then we have another book right here, uh, 10,000. This is in the Kindle store. Uh, so if we want to look at the book category, we will have to open this up. We can click on the paperback and we will have to scroll down here and look at the bestsellers rank right here, which says 136,000 in books, so a little over 80,000. I think for this one, they sell more hardcover. So let's check out the hardcover. And then if we scroll down here, it is at 2000. So it's like way below 80,000. So it's good. And when you're checking the BSR, hardcover counts as well. Some books, uh, especially like, you know, big authors, they sell in hardcover as well. So that is OK. If you want to save some time, you can use Katie Spy uh, so that you can see all the BSRs very quickly. And you can see a lot of these books are under 80,000. Right. So you have more than three. So that'll tell us that it's profitable. It's a profitable topic. The next question is, can you find others? that has less reviews because that'll show us the competition. And, you know, just like that, we have one book, a little over 80,000, but these, you know, making some sales here uh, at the 19 reviews. Uh, so if you can make some sales at 19 reviews, very low reviews, that is a good sign that you can also come in, right? So if you find books on page one that doesn't have a ton of reviews, then that'll show you that you can also rank your book on page one as well. And we see a few books uh, on page one like that with low reviews, typically 150 or less. So that shows us that decluttering is a pretty good topic. All right, so now that we identified a profitable topic, we move on to step two, which is creating the book. Now, first you need to create a book outline. So you want to look at top competitors, table of contents and reviews and write down chapters that stands out, combine it with other books as well. So you don't want to just copy one competitor and you know copy their outline entirely because that's just plagiarism but you can take a few chapters that you like from this book and then take another few chapters that you like from another book perhaps come up with your own chapter ideas yourself for a few of them and then you combine that all and you can have your own original book outline right write down what customers liked what they didn't like and apply to your outline. So you want to read the customer reviews and then, you know, if it's, there's something that shows up like, oh, I wish this book included this. I wish this book, you know, didn't cover this part because I didn't like it. Those are the stuff that you want to note down and make sure you put it into your outline. And you can use ChatGPT to get more ideas. So ChatGPT is amazing for these kind of things. Uh, so let me show you how that works. All right, so what you want to do is when you find your competitor, you can see read sample here. So open up your competitor, click on read sample. So you see their table of contents here and then you want to start asking yourself which one would be good for your book? Uh, which one do you think you can just leave out, you know, because you think it's fluff, right? And you don't really need it. So if you look at here, why can't I keep my house in order? Uh, you can't tidy if you've never learned how, right? So if you feel like this is a good chapter, just note it down. You know, we have a few here like tidying marathon doesn't cause a rebound. So, you know, the tip will be instead of doing everything in one day, you know, spread it out and, you know, make sure that it's more of a habit, more of a marathon than, you know, uh, 
a sprint, right? So you will note it down so that you can also cover that as well. Sort by category, not by location. That is a good you know, tip. So we will note it down so our writer can write that in. Once again, we're not taking everything. We're just, you know, seeing what we like, what we don't like. The next thing is you can go and look at the reviews and you can sort by, you know, all these negative reviews as well. So let's say we look at the one star reviews here and then we can see what are people complaining about. Right. And then if they're complaining about the same thing, we want to note it down and make sure our book does not cover that. Right. So we can make a better version of this book. So it says I'm not talking to my socks. So perhaps, you know, one of the tips in this book was that the author is telling people to talk to your clothes and maybe that's not a good tip so you can make sure that you do not leave that in so try and look for patterns by reading the reviews note it down and add it to your outline the next thing you can do is to ask chat gpt so you can say something like write me a book outline for decluttering book for beginners and just like that, you get a full outline created by ChatGPT, which is actually pretty amazing, right? We have introduction, welcome to clutter free life, benefits of decluttering, chapter one, foundation of decluttering, chapter two, creating a decluttering plan, chapter three, the art of letting go, chapter four, organizing for efficiency. So these are actually really, really good. What I would suggest is do not copy paste this. Once again, pick chapters that you like, put it into your outline, Take a few from your competitors, you know, as an idea, look at the reviews and then take bits and pieces and then combine it into your outline so that you have like an original one. Because if you just copy paste from ChatGPT, then there is a risk of it being too similar to your competitors. And we don't want that. We want plagiarism free original content. All right, so next you want to figure out the word count and trim size for your book. So if you're doing high content books like this decluttering book example, this is a high content book. So typically 30,000 words at five by eight to six by nine trim size is the best uh, so that'll roughly come out to 150 to 200 pages after formatting if you're doing low or medium content books like such as coloring books or journals then it depends on the book type so you have to analyze your competitors look at your competitors see what trim size you're doing to figure out what trim size you should have for your book as well and you can easily figure that out uh, just by looking at the book product page so you can see here that it's 102 pages uh, long it's 8.5 by 11 trim size okay so that is how you know the trim size how many pages you should have you can see that it has 50 individual designs in this case it's a coloring book so now you know you need 50 coloring pages to compete with this book all right so the next thing you want to do is to come up with your book title so you want to add your main keyword in the title plus add a little flair to it so your main keyword is the book topic that you came up with. So, you know, in our case, it's decluttering. Uh, so you want to put decluttering in the title, but you don't want to just do decluttering because that is boring, right? So you want to add a little flair to it, like decluttering, you know, master guide or decluttering quick start guide, right? In this case, I have an example of 10 minute decluttering cheat sheet, right? So that'll be my book title. Refer to your outline and add words that appeals to your target audience. Get inspiration from your competitors, but do not copy. So this is very important, guys. I always preach that you should get inspiration and model your successful competitors because they're successful for a reason. They're doing something right, but you never want to rip them off. Okay, never, ever, ever do that because that is a very quick way to getting your books reported and potentially losing your account. So get inspiration, but never copy. And you can use ChatGPT for book titles as well because they're pretty good at coming up with book titles but make sure that it is unique enough from your competitors so you can ask ChatGPT what are some you know decluttering book titles to come up with uh, and it'll give you some ideas but i would suggest rewriting a few of those as well and make sure checking that title on amazon to confirm that there aren't other books uh, with a very very similar title already now should you have a pen name or real name so it really doesn't matter uh, if you're not afraid to use your real name even if you're not an expert, then you should use your real name. It's a great way to build your brand as well. But if you wanna use your pen name, that is completely fine too. Now the name could be a person, so you know a pen name or a brand name like something publishing and that is completely fine now when it comes to writing the book and creating the book there's two ways of doing it i want you guys to keep in mind that you're either paying with time or money but you're always paying you're paying either way okay so you can save money but pay with time or you can save time but pay with money so let's talk about the first option so if you want to save some money it'll cost a little more time uh, which is if you have a high content book that are more text heavy, you can write the book yourself. That is how you can save money, right? But obviously you're writing the book yourself, so it's gonna you know, cost more time. If you have a design heavy books like coloring books, you can design the coloring pages yourself if you have skills to do that. But obviously it'll take more time. If you wanna save time and have somebody else do it, it'll cost more money because you have to pay 
for outsourcing that, but you can you know outsource to a ghostwriter if you have a text heavy book like this decluttering book i can just have somebody write it for me for design heavy books like coloring books you can outsource to a designer there's a lot of people that will design coloring pages for you so if you have a text heavy book and you want to outsource the writing then you can hire ghostwriters you can go to ghostwriting companies so the number one ghostwriting company that i recommend is the urban writers i'll leave a link below as well as a, a discount coupon so you can get a little discount but basically you want to go to the urban writers click on services click on the non-fiction or fiction if you're doing fiction you will click on fiction obviously but in our case it'll be non-fiction books so click on non-fiction packages and then choose whichever package that appeals to you typically i get the premium or the top package but there are other options as well now if you're doing low content books or medium content books like journals or coloring books then you can go to upwork or fiverr to hire people to create those books for you i'll leave a link to this gig in the description as well because this is the number one low and medium content book uh, producing gig that I recommend on Fiverr and it's very cost efficient and it also create a cover for you as well as the interior so you can easily create these books uh, just by you know working with this gig now you can also utilize AI because AI is you know growing and it's absolutely amazing that the production costs of a lot of these books are getting lower and lower and lower by you know being able to use AI for it so ChatGPT and Midjourney can help a lot with producing books faster and cheaper so it's absolutely amazing if you're trying to build this business but for some books it's not good enough to produce a high quality book yet so you know if you want as an example ChatGPT to write a whole book on decluttering it's probably not good enough to do it because a lot of times AI cannot remember what they wrote so it becomes very very repetitive after about 5,000 words and our books are a lot longer than that mid journey too you know it's amazing for creating images but for some books it's not good enough uh, to produce high quality images right but for some books like this example here this dad jokes books where you know it's shorter list type books where you're just listing different jokes it's absolutely amazing to use chat gpt because it's very easy you just ask chat gpt for some jokes or you know some trivia and uh they can you know list it out for you you definitely want to fact check it you definitely want to make sure that it's not stolen from somebody else uh, but still, you know, as long as you do that due diligence, then you can definitely create a book a lot faster and cheaper for it. So for this dad joke book, it is 741 in the bookstore making $115 a day in royalties, right? So that is like $3,000 plus a month. And inside is very, very simple. It's just, you know, one joke after another, right? And you can literally ask ChatGPT, write me 10 dad jokes on this topic and it will come up with the content. So it's super easy to make these books. Now I did film a video on the do's and don'ts of ChatGPT. Once again, don't just copy paste, always edit the content generated so it's unique. Check for plagiarism. You can do this on you know tools like originality.ai. You wanna fact check it as well. And if you wanna learn more, check out this video because if I explain everything, this video will be super long. So I will leave a link to all these other YouTube videos uh, that I filmed in the past. Uh, I'll leave a link to this video as well. Now, if you're creating low and medium content books, you can also utilize tools like BookBolt. BookBolt is the easiest way to create low and medium content books yourself. It's very cost efficient as well. So once again, I'll leave a link to this video on BookBolt tutorial in the description. But when you use BookBolt, you wanna always edit the interior. Don't use a template as is, okay? Very, very important. You want to keep your content unique, so always edit it. But if you're making puzzle books and you generate the puzzles from BookBolt, then you can use it as is, which is a great part about BookBolt is because every single puzzle that you generate is unique as is. So when you're choosing the BookBolt plan, you wanna make sure you're getting the pro plan, which is just uh, $20 a month. But the reason why is because you have the puzzle creation software. So if you're creating puzzle books, which I highly recommend puzzle books because puzzle books can be very profitable and you will not get that with the uh, $10 a month plan. So that's the only thing. I do have a little discount code you can use. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description below. All right, so I wanna answer this comment that I get often on, isn't it unethical to sell ghostwritten or AI books? So this is something that people say all the time. They think that just because you had a book ghostwritten or you use AI for it, it's automatically unethical. And the the answer is no, it's not because what's considered bad or unethical is if you sell a bad book that absolutely serves zero value and the customers hates it because it's not helpful at all. That is unethical, right? It doesn't really matter how the book is created. You know, just because you wrote the book yourself, let's be honest, right? Just because you wrote the book yourself does not make it good automatically. Like you can write the book yourself and it can absolutely suck 
and it'll still have zero value to the customer. You can still get negative reviews. And uh, that is way more unethical than if I would be using ghostwriters or using AI to create an actually good book that customers enjoy, okay? So the bottom line is as long as the customer is happy, that is all it matters, regardless of how you create the book. So once your ghostwriter turns in the book, you know, you want to do proofreading and editing as a next step. So once you get the book back from the ghostwriter, carefully read through to make sure you're happy with the content. Check for errors, typos, uh, use tools like Grammarly or originality.ai for plagiarism check. Request for revisions if necessary. Never accept the book that you're not happy with. And once you're happy with the book, that's when you can accept the project. So next you want to format the books. So you want to format for ebook and paperback. If you have an activity book or if you have like a you know, low content, medium content books that typically does not have an ebook version, then you don't have to create an ebook uh, formatting. You just do formatting for paperback, okay? So you can format it yourself, uh, DIY, save some money, or you can outsource. I do have a video on how to format a book for free yourself, so I'll leave a link to this as well. But if you're looking for a good formatter to outsource to, I'll leave a link to this Fiverr gig. I've been working with them for a very long time and it's very, very good. Now, formatting is one of those things where you can definitely do it yourself, but it's so cheap to outsource to the point where you should just probably outsource it, but that is just my personal opinion. All right, so next, after the formatting is done, you wanna create your book covers. So you can create book covers yourself with Canva. Technically, you can do this, but I highly, highly recommend you pay a professional because 99% of the time, you're not gonna be able to create a book cover that is good enough to really sell on Canva. So you just wanna pay somebody to outsource it. And your book cover is one of the most crucial step. Your book sales is heavily determined by the cover. So you do not want to cheap out here. Although the great thing about book cover is you can outsource to a professional and get a high quality cover. And it's actually a lot cheaper than you think. So I'll leave a link to all the gigs on Fiverr that I found that can create book covers for you for less than $20. And that is also in the description below. So once that is done, you have all the book files and you're ready to upload this book, which brings us to step three, which is uploading the book. So all you have to do, sign up to KDP, create an account, it's free, enter your bank account information, tax details, so you can actually get paid. And once you log in, it looks like this. So to upload a new title, you wanna to go to create here. And then click on ebook if you got an ebook version. If not, you can click on paperback. But the process is exactly the same. So I'll just show you the ebook version. So go here, put in your title, put your subtitle. Uh, you can skip the series and edition. That is up to you. And then put your author name for the description. For the description, uh, you can actually use ChatGPT to start the process, which is absolutely amazing because all you have to do is type in write me a product description for this book using the AIDA format. And then you get a really well-written description that has the AIDA, which is attention, interest, desire, and actions. So it is one of the most effective sales copy that you can have, which is perfect for your description. But once again, you don't want to just copy paste this or rewrite it so that it's, you know, original and then paste it in here. Now click on, I own the copyright and then answer these questions choose the category so put in the other keywords that you found to be profitable so in my case i would put something like minimalism you know something related to decluttering that i also found when i was doing my keyword research process so you put that in and then save and continue and then the rest of the process is very easy so you will just upload your ebook and the cover file and then you will also put the pricing for the book for the pricing i recommend you to look at your competitors and see what is like the average price for the book topic and then start off with a dollar or two cheaper but as you gather reviews you want to go and you know price your book higher and higher as you get more reviews now it might take a few days for your book to be accepted which is completely normal so don't panic Another thing is you might get rejected if there's something wrong with the book files, but they'll let you know why. So you can just fix that and re-upload and try again. All right, so once that is done, your book is uploaded. It'll be live on Amazon in a couple days. The next step is step four, book marketing. So when it comes to marketing, you want to get sales and reviews in the first 30 days of publishing to tell Amazon that your book is in demand. In return, Amazon will rank your book higher in the algorithm and your book will be seen to more people. So you have to get sales and reviews. The first thing you want to do is get reviews before you go and get sales because reviews are what gets more sales, right? So how do you get reviews? So I recommend to get minimum 15 reviews per book before marketing, uh, just as a general guideline. 
Reviews act as a social proof, which makes it much easier to get sales. Now, there are many free and cheap ways to get reviews. So you can utilize Facebook groups and sites like Pubby to gather reviews. It'll be way too long to show you how to do that. So I covered this in another video. Once again, the link is in the description. Now, when it comes to sales, Amazon wants to promote high quality books that sells and nothing tells Amazon that more than getting reviews and sales first, right? The more reviews and sales you get for the book, Amazon sees that and they're like, oh, this book is popular. This book is getting sales. Let's promote it more. So that is exactly what we're trying to do here. Now, you want to do a little work in the beginning to get Amazon to start promoting it. Then after that, Amazon will just take over the rest, right? And then the snowball effect kicks in. So that is why this business can be very, very passive later on. You just have to put in the work in the beginning. Now, there are many free and low cost ways to promote the book. Once again, I do have all the strategies mentioned in this video. So the link is in the description. And just like that, congratulations, you're now a published author if you follow all these steps. So you can stop here or if you want to take it further, It'll be step five, which is turning your book into an audiobook. So you cannot do this if you have a low content book or activity books because it's impossible to turn a puzzle book or coloring book into an audiobook. But if you have a high content book like, you know, decluttering book as an example, then you can do audiobooks. Now, this adds an additional income stream. And that is why I like high content books in general. That's why I say, you know, it's like easier to make money long term. Uh, but it really depends. You can still make great money with low and low content, medium content books as well. So turning your book into an audiobook is very, very easy. All you have to do is sign up to ACX, put your book up for audition, pick your narrator, and then your book will be narrated. It's actually very cheap. You can do this for only a few hundred dollars uh, to turn your book into an audiobook. Once again, the step-by-step -step tutorial, uh, I'll leave a link in the description below. So this is how I made hundreds of thousands of dollars outside of amazon.com. I've made over like 150,000 units sold. Every single unit you're making $3 or so, you know, $3.5 to be accurate. So you can kind of estimate how much I made uh, from audiobooks. So once that is done, there's so many more things that you can do to make even more money from the books that you created, right? So in terms of what's next, you know, if you follow these strategies and create a high quality book in an in-demand niche, you will start making sales. And by repeating these steps and publishing more books, you can make a thousand dollars a month or a lot more. Now, there are a lot more advanced strategies that you can do, like turning this book into seven plus more income streams and scale to ten thousand dollars a month or much, much more like me and a lot of our students are doing, right? So, you know, what you can do such as audiobooks, we talked about that. You can promote your book in other bookstores. So there's a lot of other bookstores that you can upload your book to uh, outside of Amazon. You can also translate your book. You can translate to Spanish, German, you know, just like that, uh, you have so many more income streams. You can turn your book into seven plus income streams uh, from the work that you've already done, right? Now, the video will be way too long if I try to explain all these strategies, but I do cover this in my free training uh, that you guys can check it out, okay? So these are the strategies that, you know, a lot of our students took to make a lot more money. Nicolo over here made $58,000 in July. 50K came from KDP and ACX made $8,000. Okay, so just from audiobooks, he made an additional $8,000. Christine over here made $10,000 from audiobooks alone. And Brock over here made $24,800 dollars in one month uh anchor over here made twenty three thousand uh, dollars so you know it's not just me right a lot of people are winning and publishing and that is why i think publishing is absolutely amazing but you know basically this video explained everything you have to know uh to make a thousand dollars a month or more in publishing you just have to go and follow it and then repeat this process right but if you want to take it further if you want to scale this business right if you want to take it seriously there is a link to the additional training that you can watch in the description which should be the very first link but it is a link to a free training on how i built a seven figure publishing business so it kind of walks you through everything we talked about but you know a lot more stuff so if you want to watch that once again the link is in the description as well as all the other you know videos tools resources mentioned in this video as well everything will be in the description below and with that being said if you're still watching at the very end of the video i appreciate you let me know in the comments that you made it to the end so comment i made it to the end and if you have any questions i will answer it for you all right guys so now it's time to actually take action you have everything you need to know so you can go and take action based on the information in this video okay once you publish a book let me know in the comments as well so we can congratulate you on becoming a published author. And if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't yet. It actually helps me out a lot more than you think. So if you do do that, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.